The first issue is the ruling, the hukum of tarawih. All of us know that it's sunnah, meaning it's something that we should do, but it's not something we have to do. But nonetheless, it's become part of our customs. It's something we do every single year. It's become from the sha'ir of Allah. And as Allah told us in the Quran, ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَذِّمْ شَعَائِرُ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ And whoever honors the sha'ir, the signs of Allah, then that is sign of the piety of the hearts. However, something that many people don't know is that many of the scholars, they actually say that it's better for us to pray in the house. So there is a difference of opinion in this issue from the beginning. Is it better to pray in the masjid or is it better to pray in the house? And many of the scholars who taught us in Medina, they used to pray in their houses. They didn't go and pray in the masjid. They had different reasons. Some of them thought it was better that they should pray in the house. Other ones said, we want to pray for a long time. And in the masjid, they, I mean, their, their prayer is too short for us. I remember one of them telling me, I like to pray with three jizu, with a long rukur and long suju. So he used to pray in his house. Another scholar who taught me, he told me that my mother makes me come and lead the prayer in the house. Therefore, I go back and I pray in the house. So there is a difference of opinion between the scholars. And I remember last year in the country I was in, the way they prayed, they would just lead like one or two ayah and make record, it was very fast. So after I prayed one day with them, I said to myself, I'm not benefiting because the objective is for us to benefit from this prayer. Therefore, I used to pray in the house last year and I found it much more better and much more beneficial. So it's not the end of the world. The fact that we have to pray in our houses, in fact, it actually might be better for us. All of us know the great reward of praying tarawih. The Prophet والسلام, he taught us that if we pray during Ramadan through Iman, through our faith and through Ihtisab, wanting the reward from Allah that our past sins will be forgiven. But another reward that we tend to miss out on is praying with our Imam from the beginning to the end and to, from the time he starts until the finish. And our beloved Prophet وسلم, told us that whoever does this, that it will be written for him as if he has prayed for the entire night. So you might pray for 20 or 30 minutes, but you get the reward as if you pray for the entire night under the condition that you start with the Imam and you stay with him until he finishes, until he says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Virtual or online tarawih. This is something you wouldn't think is real, but <laughs> unfortunately it is. There are those people out there who intend to pray behind the Imam online. And this is something that's not permissible. And whoever does it, his prayer will not be accepted. And it doesn't matter if you're praying behind the Imam in Mecca or the Imam in Medina or in your local mosque. If it's something online and you're following online, then the prayers won't be accepted. Because as the scholars mentioned, in order for the prayer to be accepted, you have to be in the same vicinity, the same location as the Imam himself. Who should be the Imam? Who should lead the prayers when we pray Tarawih at home? Obviously, it must be someone who's from the males. And then the origin is that the head of the household, he would be the imam. But there's certain conditions that must be met in order for him to be the imam. And that is, first of all, that he reads the Quran properly, especially Surah Al-Fatiha. And then he knows the basic rulings of imama as the imam, the basic fiqh rulings that he needs to know in order to lead the prayers. If there is someone in the household who is more knowledgeable than him, someone who has a better recitation, then perhaps it's better that he gives him the opportunity to lead the prayer. And there's an amazing opportunity in front of us, and that is to let our children lead the prayers. Or maybe just lead some of the rakats in, in, during the tarawih. And many of our kids, they go to Quran schools, and many of them have memorized a lot of the Quran. And some of them, honestly, they have better recitations than us. And they don't have to have reached the age of puberty to lead the prayers. It's been confirmed in the Sunnah that one of the Sahaba was six, seven years old. He was the Imam. As long as they can distinguish and they know the basic rulings of the prayer, it's permissible for them to lead the prayer. What time should we pray? The time starts from right after Isha all the way to Salatul Fajr. And the best time that the Prophet Ali Salatul used to focus on, he prayed in all times of the night, the first part, the middle part, and the third. But he would focus more on praying during the last third of the night. However, this might be difficult for a lot of us, especially those of us who have families. So it's probably better that we stick with the original routine like we would do if we were going to the masjid. And that's to pray right after Isha, inshallah ta'ala. But what if someone wants to pray longer, they want to pray more? Inshallah ta'ala, we're going to mention that in a bit. How many rakat should we pray? Ah, the saga continues, even from home, 2011, 2011. Even though subhanAllah, each year we have an issue with this. The hadith are very, very clear. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that Salat al-Layl, the night prayer is methna methna. So if you want to pray 20 
If you want to pray 36 like they pray in some countries, or they used to pray anyways, it's permissible, no problem. However, no doubt the best is to pray the same way the Prophet ﷺ used to pray, which is praying 11 rak'ats. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said the Prophet ﷺ would never increase on 11 rak'ats in Ramadan or outside of Ramadan. But what's more significant than the quantity, the number itself, is the quality of the prayer. And this is something, wallahi, that we've missed out. And it's become, in many of our masajid, like a joke. And that's what I'm saying, that perhaps this year, the fact that we have to pray in isolation, we can fix some of these things. So it actually might be better for us. Unfortunately, all around the world, the main objective of tarawih for most people is just to finish the Quran. And no doubt that's something important. We're going to talk about it in a minute, inshallah. However, is this the true objective of the prayer? When you look into the description of the night prayer of the Prophet wasallam, he would make his ruku' and his sujood about the same length as his recitation. Not like we do today, where many people, Wallahi, you feel that the way they make ruku' and sujood so fast that they're actually making a mockery of the prayer. One of the best tarawees that I ever had was in the UAE. And when I first went into this masjid, I came about the middle of Ramadan, and I prayed about half Ramadan with, with this imam. When I came in, I found that he was... Like in, in the, still in Surah Al-Baqarah after about 15 days, I was like, what is this guy doing? And it, we're used to, you know, we should be halfway through the Quran now. And then I noticed when he prayed, the masjid, first of all, was very and he, peaceful inside of the masjid, the way it was set up, the way it smelled, how clean it was. And then he would read just about a half a page, but he would read very slow, very clearly. And then he would make a nice ruqur and a nice sujood. It didn't take that long, but wallahi, the way you felt in the prayer and after the prayer, absolutely amazing. And this is the objective of the Salat. Do we have to read the entire Quran in Tarawih? And the answer is no. You can read as much as you want. You can read less. You can read more. And he obviously is something that the scholars mention that it's praiseworthy. It's recommended if you can read the entire Quran because you will hear the entire Quran and those praying behind you will hear the entire Quran as well. However, if that's too much, then you read as much as you can. Alhamdulillah. Also, you don't have to read in order, meaning that you start from Surah Al-Baqarah and then you go to Ali Imran and then to An-Nisa. You can read from any part of the Quran that you want. In fact, it's actually better that you focus on the surahs that you know well, because this is going to help you, first of all, it's going to make sure that your recitation is on point, and it's also going to help you concentrate and focus. But I don't memorize a lot. Is it permissible for me to read from the Quran, to read from the Mus'haf? And the answer is yes, there's no problem with that, inshallah ta'ala. In fact, it's been confirmed in Sahih Bukhari that Umm al-Mu'mineen Aisha radiallahu anha that her servant, that one, he used to lead her in prayer and he would read from the Mus'haf. However, there's a very important fiqh issue that you need to know, whether you're the Imam or if you're the one being led in the prayer. And that we see all the time in the Masajid, what happens when the people are, are reading or they're following as the Imam is reciting. What do they do when they come to make sujood? They do like this. And they make the sujood like this with their hand on the ground. And what happens when someone does this? They invalidate their sujood. The sujood will not be accepted. Pay attention to this. Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, we've been ordered to make sujood on the seven limbs. And from them is the palms of the hands. Therefore, if you make sujood on the back of your hand, your sujood is not going to be correct and your prayer will not be accepted. Make sure you pray with your imam until the end. We all know the reward that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned the hadith, as we mentioned earlier. But the question comes now, is what if I want to pray longer, if I want to pray more? This is permissible for you to pray later, and there's two ways you can go about doing that. Sometimes, like we see in the masajid, when the imam gives the salams, the person gets up and makes uh, an extra rakat. This is permissible, but there's another way, which I feel is better, and that is that you make the salams with the imam, and then if you want to pray later, then you can pray any time throughout the night. Because what so many people don't understand is that what is forbidden is for me to pray two witters a night. I mean, I can't come and pray witter again. But if I pray witter with my imam, and then I pray two rakats, and two rakats, and two rakats, and I just pray nafil, voluntary, throughout the night, there's no problem with this, inshallah ta'ala. But I can't make the long dua like the imams make in the masajid. So what should I do in this situation? Alhamdulillah, don't worry about it, because this long dua is not from the sunnah anyways. All you need is the dua that our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make in the qunut. And I'll put the link in the description below. If you want to add some du'as to that, then alhamdulillah, there's no problem with that. In fact, this is an opportunity for us to learn some new, new du'as throughout the month that we added du'a here, we added du'a there. 
and we're adding to our arsenal of du'as that we're going to learn for Ramadan and for after Ramadan as well. Try to make sure that the du'as you learn and you memorize, they're du'as from the Qur'an and from the Sunnah because that's where the true blessing is, is in these du'as. And an important Sunnah to note is that the Prophet ﷺ, he wouldn't make du'a every night. Therefore, once or twice during Ramadan, we leave the du'a 